What's good, YouTube? It's Adam from I'm a Music Mogul, and uh, just finished watching the Mac uh, keynote for WWDC. And uh, there's a lot of good things that were announced, and I just want to talk a little bit about it, specifically about Mac OS Big Sur and what it means for Logic users, potentially what it could mean. Just want to start that conversation, and uh, maybe we can uh, figure some things out between the, all of us here. But um, these are just some of my thoughts about Mac OS Big Sur. Now, of course, Mac OS Big Sur is the latest new OS, upcoming OS for Mac users in the fall. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the iOS updates that much as opposed to the Mac OS update just because Mac OS Big Sur is the first operating system by Mac that will fully implement Apple's new SoC chip uh, specifically designed for Mac operating systems so MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, Mac Bros potentially in the future and uh, so this is pretty much the start uh, of the new shift of where Apple is heading and that is to build all of their hardware uh, by themselves as they do with the iPhone, iPad and watchOS. They design their own chips for those specific devices and now they're going to create one chip, an ARM chip specifically for Mac devices. Okay, so what does that all mean uh, for us Logic users and us Pro users who use Pro apps all the time on Mac computers? Now for one, if you ever used an iPhone or iPad, the major benefit to having a Apple-based chip in your Mac is that it does the thermals and the power that it draws is a lot lower. So one on a Mac ARM based chip, the power that it's going to draw is going to be a lot lower like your iPad and iPhone, but the efficiency and how much power it outputs as far as processing power and GPU power is very, very high. And what's also even a bigger benefactor to having Apple design their own chips is that the thermals will be completely non-existent, if you will, because your computers will no longer need fans. Now, if you're a Logic user and you're in the studio or just in your home studio in your bedroom, as you know, your computer, the fan starts to rev up anytime there's some uh, processing power uh, is needed. In an ARM-based um, Apple SoC chip, this is non-existent anymore. It's gonna run silent just like your iPad or iPhone. So you're never gonna to have to worry about fan noise in your recordings for one, and that is huge. Thermals on a computer is always a big factor, and this is just gonna fix that. You're, you're not gonna need a 90 watt power adapter to charge your Mac Pro either. Uh, definitely a lot of good things to come out from a Mac uh, designed CPU chip. I myself am looking very forward to that. And um, now back to the question about what does that mean for us Logic users? And here's what it could mean. This is complete speculation, but in the video, uh, Greg was talking about how they already have natively running uh, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro apps natively running on that ARM chip that Apple has developed. So what does that mean? That means one, Logic Pro can finally come to the iPad, uh, which is something I think a lot of people are wanting right now. We just have GarageBand on iPad, but I think Logic Pro, because it's all gonna be using the same architecture, iPhone, iPad, to iOS, uh, to Mac OS, everything can be interchanged. You can download apps on whatever platform you use. Because they have Logic and Final Cut Pro already programmed and already working, according to the video, then that means Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro is not too far behind finding their way onto the iPad Pro, which I'm guessing is probably gonna come in an October update. There's gonna be a new iPad Pro and you're gonna be able to do more things and download more Pro apps. So that's the plus size. Logic Pro can come to the iPad Pro. Uh, you can have Logic on your Mac, on your iPad. I'm not too sure how it's gonna work on your iPhone. It might just be a iPad specific app, but um, that's that. You guys can let me know in the comments below what you think about that. But there are some problems that I can sort of foresee here. And um, it is plugins. Now, I don't know if some of you remember the tr transition from PowerPC over to Intel based architecture on Macs. A lot of plugins or plugin developers had to update their plugins to work with the new architecture. So that may 
be a problem if you get yourself a Mac with an ARM based chip, a Mac developed uh, SOC, but it may not be because what they are saying, they have a new version of Rosetta that's going to help you or help sort of allow you to run those x86 architecture plugins to run natively on a Mac built SOC or system on a chip CPU. Um, so it could be better than the way it was in the past and how the tradition went, uh, transition went. They said it's going to be two years for everything to fully integrate into the new ecosystem that Apple is building. I'm sure it's a developer crisis right now thinking how they're going to transition their apps. Um, I think they probably learned a lot from Microsoft's uh, latest Surface Book, Surface Book Pro. I'm not too sure what they called it, but it was their first ARM-based laptop. And any app that ran natively on that CPU ran great. But if you're trying to run an Intel x86 app, uh, there was stumbles. It kind of slowed down. It's not as fast. It's not as quick. It's not as swift. So maybe we'll have the same issues on a Mac with regards to third-party plugins in Logic Pro. But the core plugins of Logic, all the stock plugins, are going to run natively on it. And that's why I believe they can transition that app, the Logic Pro app, over to the iPad Pro as well, which will also open the doors to all those AU3 plugins that are over on the iPad Pro that you use, or iPad in general, or iPhone that you use with GarageBand, those AU3 versions. A lot of great synths and software and really plugins that you could use on your iOS devices you can't use on your Mac computer. Now those will be able to transition to there as well. So just a lot of great things coming to the Mac with this ARM-based chip and Apple-built system on a chip. I cannot wait for it. I can't wait for Mac OS Big Sur either, but as you may or may not know, I never update until like a year later. So I'm always running on a previous OS just because it's not compatible with everything that I use. But that is my main takeaway from here is that Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro will be able potentially to run on iPad Pro in the near future. Uh, they did announce that there will be this new Mac based CPU computers coming out uh, by the end of the year. My best guess is it's gonna come into either a MacBook Air or they're gonna bring back the MacBook family before it comes to the MacBook Pros uh, is my best guess, just because I still believe the Intel base CPUs are probably still a little bit more powerful as far as um, processing power and GPU power goes at Mac Pro level apps. But once those apps are translated to a natively run on a Mac CPU, I think, um, this CPU is just going to change the game for everybody, not just Logic users, video editors, everybody out there who uses a Mac. That's it for this video. Just wanted to do a quick update and just do a quick chat on um, Mac OS Big Sur and the new CPU that they are building, the new SOC. Uh, what do you guys think about it? Let me know down in the comment section below. I don't see anything or I haven't found anything yet that they talk about that new chip but uh, I'm gonna continue looking here. Just want to get this video out and get the conversation started. That's it for me, guys. Let me know what you think about the latest update to uh, Mac OS and uh, what you think about Logic and how it can run on your iPad. Is that something you want? Is it something you don't want? Um, it's definitely something I'm looking forward to. I'm not sure, again, how third-party plugins are gonna work, but all those plugins and AU3 units that you can already have on your iOS devices will work on your Mac as well. Really, really cool stuff and definitely a lot, a lot to look forward to, but definitely with all this new stuff can come with some problems with the software that you currently use. So it's sort of a give and take on how much you use, what you use, and you make the decision for yourself. That's it from you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Later. Take care. Peace.